Hey everybody, welcome to League of Legends Anonymous, episode 244. This week I'm here with my buddies Astros VK and Zill. What's going on, fellas? Hi. Hello, hello. Astros, you sound excited as ever. You gonna it's been a long day, it's been a long day, alright? You gonna blow the top off of this episode with that enthusiasm? It's so raw and natural coming from you? He always uh, does. Yes, yes. Always. Damn, with that <laughs> opening crushed my intro with just a wave of sadness and melancholy. Thank you, buddy. But I am not going to be dehyped. Why am I not going to be dehyped? Because we have a special guest on this week. We are bringing on Jonathan A. Carter. Hey, Jonathan. Is Hello. It, is it Carter or Cater? Carter. Okay, I You just lose the R? Name. Yeah, no, I, it didn't. Fit, I don't think so. I need to fix that. Hmm. But either way, Jonathan Carter, tell us a little bit about yourself, buddy. What do you want to know? Well, first off, uh, what is your occupation? Hmm. Um, so my day job's with the U.S. Army. I train soldiers how to use their brains better so they perform better. And on the side, I do that with esports. Cool, cool. So uh, whenever you say you train them how to use their brains better, is it performance training, overcoming anxiety? Like, what, what's your emphasis there? Yeah, so my background's in sport and performance psychology. So it kind of hits the gamut. I don't have a clinical background, so it's not like sit people on the couch and, and figure out their darkest secrets. It's about what's getting in the way of people performing at their best. So sometimes it's tilt or can't focus or their energy is off uh setting goals any anything in between okay so basically kind of bridging the gap between what makes you your current you and what makes you a more successful version of the same thing it's a really nice way to say it thank you so he could so, get me diamond is what i'm hearing uh I don't think he said he was a uh, religious figure capable of performing miracles, but you know. Like, aren't knows? you lower ranked than me? Hold on, let me. Right now, yes. I historically, think no. I mean, historically, <laughs> the whole season. I don't uh, know, dude. Okay, hate away. I guess I've earned <laughs> it. I can't talk too much shit. See, that's why I've got to get back to Diamond, is so I can just talk shit on Astros effectively. Because this shit isn't working. I'm not like, yeah, you suck. And he's like, yeah, better than you. I'm like, hmm. fuck. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know. Anyone I've worked with, they, like, even at the high level, they say everyone's shit. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, uh, okay. I'm really shit. So you've played League of Legends before, is what you're getting at. Uh, so... <laughs> You have worked with some esports stuff. You said you do that on the side. What agencies have you worked with? Uh, so I'm not going to list them all, just because I guess not all of them were public. But just games wise, uh, so like I started doing this job in general, like let's say ten years ago when I got my masters, um, and then let's say 2013 esports started booming league of legends in particular and i realized that people were doing what i do with esports in which i thought it was cool because i like games and like i already know this stuff <laughs> uh so early on some league of legends teams some are still teams some are not anymore r.i.p energy or not energy they, well they were a ember. team too uh ember also yeah uh, I've done, then since then I've done some work with like CS:GO, Overwatch, uh, Little Dota. Okay, and these are like professional teams in the scene. And obviously, you're not wanting to miss, like mention I worked with X player or I worked with Y player because it may have confidentiality concerns, right? Yeah, I, I've worked with NALCS. I've worked with EU LCS. I've worked with Overwatch League. Uh, I've worked with some top ten at CS:GO teams. Sweet. And main rosters or like academy mm -hmm. teams? Uh, it's a mix. Academy teams are, are a little newer still, so they're still trying to figure out exactly how to empower them the same way they do pros. But um, mostly main rosters and then some of the teams who are a bit more forward thinking recognize that they should develop their younger players too. Okay, so at the top of the ladder, what are like some of the most common 
performance issues that you would take a hand in fixing? Um, it, the same things that affect people at the bottom of the ladder in some ways, they just take shape at like, they don't have any more technical or tactical issues. They just, it's, it's all mental or how they approach their game at that level. So um, communication issues are often kind of a thing with upper level teams. They're trying to gel. They're like five very good players. If we take League of Legends as an example, but they just don't know how to communicate or shot call, I guess, how people tend to think of it. Mm -hmm. um, some of it's just like motivation. So they're really good. They get to a high level, but they don't know how to keep that up because it either gets stale or gets boring or maybe the meta shifts and it like I think back to like when ADC's last season or the season before it had to start going mid and oh like, yeah so like if you take Peter Doublelift for example like that was a new thing for him he has like all these instincts that he that he brought on the side lane and now he's got to shift middle and it's like uncomfortable so I think anytime we see a meta shift it's that lack of comfort that okay pros have so like whenever you say it's a lot of the same issues right mm -hmm. uh it seems like you're mostly talking about like interpersonal skills and like relating to other people uh gelling as a unit do you find that like the nerd culture that we all kind of derive from like is a lot of the foundation of those problems derived from that culture or does that actually like aid them in getting along with each other? Maybe I asked a horrible question. No, I, I think you asked like a couple of questions. So I'm just I did. Yeah. I just yeah, compounded yeah. them into one super question. Yeah. So I think part of it is that we don't have the same like systems in competition to, sorry, my cats are, Oh, you're Causing good. Yeah. Uh, so I think like League in particular until recently, the, the way you talk is you just type at people and get really mad and send them pings. Uh, and so I still do that. Right. Yeah. It's still available. But, <laughs> but like traditional sport builds in, you have to actually talk to the other people or at least look at them. And we don't have those nonverbals in eSport unless you're actually on a team and you're landing and the verbals are not exactly effective. So I think that's something people need to to work on. When it look when you look at solo queue, I think the problems are more people don't know how to maintain their attention properly. They get in their own way in their thoughts. So like they either tilt off and they're focusing on the wrong things or they just they're not really thinking about what they have to do now. They're just thinking about the fact that their mid didn't ping missing and now they're really pissed off because they died even though there's something that they can control there okay so i have a friend that uh, suffers from issues such as that in solo queue mm -hmm. uh he's a little bit higher ranked than me on the ladder right now uh what advice would you have for this anonymous person that you know tilts off the face of the earth in his solo queue games like how do, how do we deal with that how do we deal with Tilt? Why are you going to throw Zill under the bus like that, dude? <laughs> yeah, Zill's a fucking mental case. I, just, I am. I just, that yeah, guy? I woo! I rage. that vibe. It's the yeah. striped shirt. Yeah, it's explosive rage is why he's wearing that shirt. It helps him calm. Let's keep um, I, the, like, not flashy and probably not satisfying answer for Tilt is, like, a lot of it comes with ahead of time you need to... Like, like you can't just quick fix it. It's like a something you have to develop over time where you recognize that you're actually tilting. And for a lot of people that involves like recognizing the situations that they get themselves into that cause tilt. So like what your triggers are or what Yeah. What if so, you just have like an inf like like let's just say you have like an infinite amount of triggers just like playing any game. <laughs> like you just you get triggered. Like, as soon as, like... Uh, Hypothetically, I might yeah. be talking about yeah. that guy. Seems like, he's like the you. Hulk, he's always angry. That's yeah. what's happening there, I think. So it sounds like you all have the same friend. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, like, you're tilted before you start playing? Uh, like, I this don't know. This person. Like, I can't speak for him, but just, like, 
He's never really speak not. Speak as if you were him, though. Yeah, yeah. Just go oh, ahead yeah, and speak as if you were him. I think that would be easier. Yeah. Hmm. You you know you're just like always like on edge. Hmm. Like you just boom really easily. Well, do you get paid to play League of Legends? I get paid to play any video game. No, do you get paid paid money? Uh, Cash money. I've gotten like a paycheck from Twitch. That's okay. true. Time. He has okay. once. Because the cool thing about games is that you don't have to do them. Would be. Yeah, but would then be. I'm really bored. <laughs> okay. Uh, like at the top level, That's tilts a problem because I'm it gets in the way of money. Mm-hmm. Um, if you find well, it, what if tilts is what's keeping me from going pro? That is probably an issue. For Astros. It, it might be. That and opportunity and skill have also gotten in the way. Literally, it's a, he it's, said it like 12 it, times that I'm a better player than him. That yeah, I have no mental. So It's, it's like a trifecta of problems. That he needs to uh, solve all three, and then he'd just break right into the scene. Opportunity, skill, and tilt? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, those well, it seems three. like the opportunity's there. Like you're doing a League of Legends podcast, so I imagine you know, the skills there. I'm in, I'm insane. You should you should have seen my AD carry play yesterday. It was pretty nutty. So, so it's actually, just actually, he's right. It's just yesterday, I'll give it to him. Yesterday, he was playing on par. But you know, realistically, yeah, no, I, I mean, and I've said this about Astros for a while is that uh, I think he's his own worst enemy in solo queue because like mechanically he is actually a very good player like far better than i am mechanically but like his mental goes boom so mm-hmm. there's got to be like what are some strategies that he or our listeners that you know have these same issues can use to cope with those kind of problems or hedge them at least yeah so i think part of it is uh, like you're saying everything triggers, but uh, I imagine there are some themes to them. Um, and a lot of it is trying to set the stage where you either don't have as many things triggering you. Um, so sometimes it's like you're playing with certain people and they do certain things that tilt you or chat gets in your way. Like one of the easiest things is you just disable chat. Like if you're good for most people, and I think any t- anyone who watches streams sees this, if your elo is high enough and you're that much better than everyone else, like you can climb regardless of what else is going on. Mm-hmm. And if we assume that's true, well, let's not argue sure. with that at the moment. But like, if we assume that's true, then if the other people are getting in your way in terms of like you read something in chat and that triggers you and then you tilt and then tilt leads you to play poorly, like just disable, disable chat. like it's almost like a, a training wheel into getting away from tilt as you can like move that out of the way first. Um, I think another trick that people can build in is like pre planning how they're going to deal with it. So removing chats one way, but like, if you know that, like if I die to a gank pre level six and m- my like, I died to their jungler, my jungler wasn't involved. So like the trigger is that you're going to get tilted because their jungler clearly made a, a movement to bot lane. Let's say you're in bot lane and uh, your jungler didn't do anything. So maybe your tendency is to then get pissed off that your jungler wasn't involved. Well, that's not going to like unkill you. Um, and so <laughs> just be thinking about I'll like... I'll do that. <laughs> I love it when... Yeah, he plays Zillion, by so, the way. Uh, I'll do so the that's kind of his story. Okay. So... Yeah. Barring a zillion ult pre six, would be pretty impressive to have your ult pre six. Uh, like, just be thinking about all these different scenarios that can start to trigger you, and it's called like when then thinking. It's pretty easy. It's like a lot like programming. So when whatever happens, then and like you insert the blank with something you're gonna do that's more proactive than just like getting caught back in your head. Because a lot of time, what tilt is really is we just get fixated on thoughts about something that happened and it's the thoughts that are going to create the anger the rage the anxiety whatever it is it's not actually what happened Mm -hmm. and so if we can like interrupt that before it gets too far we can like 
move our thoughts in a more proactive direction. Okay. Now that actually makes a lot of sense. So like basically you have a pre-programmed response to what you're looking at and then you lean on that response, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I imagine it takes some effort to get there for a lot of people. Like there's going to be some trial and error. You've got to practice it like any other skill, I imagine. Yeah. Uh, so if you do that and you fail, how do you reset? Like, what are some, some methods for that? So you're saying you've tried to do your homework ahead of time. You've figured out what it is causes you to tilt. Mm -hmm. Something happens, you start tilting, and none, none of that pre-planning is working. Right. So, like, yeah. I mean, you're, you're just starting. Because I imagine nobody's going to go straight, I need to do this kind of thinking, and then go straight zen. Zen. You yeah. Know, yeah, yeah. You're not just going to be like, oh, I have opened my third eye, and now <laughs> yeah. tilt is no longer a problem. Right. You know, so, with me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it sounds so. like your friend could do that. Right, uh, right. Yeah, so it is a skill, and I think that's often, uh, that's like the one frustrating part about organizations attempting to work with people like me is they want quick fixes, band-aids, magic wands, and... Mm -hmm. If that were the case, I would be a lot more wealthy. I was kind of hoping that was the case, honestly. Yeah. Or you would also, I'd be a lot a more wealthy. Right yeah, or I'd work myself out of a job. Or like everyone with a, a sport or performance psych background would be an Olympian. And <laughs> right. I'm, I'm like pretty good at a lot of things, but I'm not an Olympian. And that was not because I chose to like not use my power. Uh, so some things that you can do breathing helps a lot with like balancing our nervous system mm -hmm. so a lot of what happens is i'm sure you all have heard of fight or flight yep mm -hmm. yeah so we okay so i have heard of fight or flight it's your like autonomic reaction to stress where you either run or you like get ready to gear up to do battle right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that there are kids that listen to our show that might not have heard of that. So okay. there you go. There's the explanation. Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask you for one and you just, you crushed it. I'm so, a fighter, so I punch my desk a lot. Okay. Is yeah. that a good way to detail? Uh, has it worked? Uh, I'm, I mean, I could hit my desk right now and we could try. Are you tilted right now? See, that's the thing. I think I'm just always tilted on, like, a mm. subconscious level. So instead of, like, always being zen, I'm just always tilted. Mm. Honestly, like, it, I don't... It, it, I don't know. For me, like, it takes a lot to get me there. You know, like, I don't tilt easily. I get... Uh, I get uh, irritated... But this like, is the I'm not mad, I'm disappointed speech that your parents give you. Yeah, it's very similar to that. Like, I'm just, I'm like, oh, God, I'm going to have to I'm deal with I'm not tilted, this. I'm just upset. Well, no, 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 I mean, there is a difference. Because, like, tilt to me is, like, when you let your emotional state impact your play or when your emotional state impacts your play, mm -hmm. right? Nobody's a friggin' robot that they're going to get, you know, uh, some horrible thing happen and you're not going to have an emotional response. It's just, it takes a lot of baggage for me to, like, lose playability. I'm not saying it mm -hmm. doesn't happen. I'm just saying, like, it takes a lot for me to get there. But I don't have anger issues. It, t it takes one specific thing for me right now. And what that is that? Is, um, so I don't get tilted playing normals. I love playing normals with you guys. In fact, that's why I've like, been spending a lot of my time doing that. But I can't play ranked right now. It's really difficult for me. And the main thing for me is watching other people get tilted in the game. Like watching somebody just run it down mid because they just got killed two seconds ago. You know what I mean? Like that is like, I just get this seizing anxiety of like, I'm going to waste the next 40 minutes of my life in this game because someone else is literally holding me hostage mm. and with their rage. And that is like it's just to the point where it kind of seems to happen in like 25 to 35 percent of my games and i just don't want to deal with it <laughs> like um so yeah so out of a curiosity is it like a feeling of helplessness that you hate or what is it about kind that? of i it's kind of a, a desperation like um 
see it's like seeing friends fr fight or something you know what i mean like i want to stop because i don't want them to do damage to each other i don't want them to ruin the situation um or a relationship that we have or the game that i'm in yeah i just want to i wanted to have a good time and now it's not even like a possibility that i could win um so and it's unfun to sit in it you know um I, th I think, yeah, it's just that sort of anxiety really wells up in me lately when I see people get, like, angry at each other. And I don't even, like, I'll turn chat off and ranked, but, like, you can just tell by behavior, right? Like, when somebody just decides to, like, completely split push on their own and they don't give a fuck if they die 12 times. Like, it's like, and you can see the pings anyway. It's like, there's a lot of... The Hashenshin syndrome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not just top laners either, right? Like, it's ADCs do it, uh, junglers do it. Um, pretty much the only people who don't do it are supports, and and the mid because I'm I'm the guy who is mid, so I'm not doing it. So you but find yeah. when that happens that you then play poorly. I do because I have these racing thoughts of like how can I control the damage? How can I stop the bleeding? How can I make everyone calm the fuck down? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes I'll turn chat back on and be like, hey, it's okay or whatever, and like put those try to quarterback comments. it right. But like that emotional stress even makes me not play well. Like, mechanically, I start, like, not watching the minimap as much. I start missing CS and things like that. Like, my baseline stuff falls behind because I'm so worried about the mental stability of the team. Hmm. That's why me and Zill don't duo. Actually, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> you end when you, when you tell... I actually, I don't end. I just get very, very verbal. Hmm. Yeah. I and it's like stress. I don't, <laughs> I don't type a lot in game. Like if I'm in voice, Zill's trigger is mental instability. Astro's is the avatar of mental instability in a game. I'm the poster child, yeah. Well, hey, and Ponderous. Ponderous is really bad about that. Too. Well, I don't the think only time Ponderous you guys have ever heard me yell is when you either you two are getting in a fight or Ponderous is yelling at everyone. <laughs> so, yeah. so I mean, like I said, this is uh, this is an interesting issue because like you've got how do i deal with like anger issues like i get mad and then i say shit versus mm -hmm. how do i deal with people who are getting mad and saying shit yeah <laughs> well and, like, and the thing we don't is... need this to be a therapy session necessarily. no no, 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 no. I, I understand that but i think sure. these are like very common issues yeah. from like you know uh you know ragers and the people that duo with them <laughs> right. yeah it sounds like, like a sitcom yeah, or like violent men and the women who love them is the same kind of like. It's the League of Legends version of that. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. That's yes. why me and Danger stopped doing. Go ahead, Jonathan. Yeah, so, so I don't do therapy, so you're okay there. Okay, I'm, cool. I'm not on the clinical side, but I do. Well, then why to... are we here? What the hell? Because <laughs> I'm trying to fix performance, what you really care about. You want to be better at League, you don't really care about your feelings. It's exactly I know, right. I want him to True. be better at League. Uh... Right after I am. Just right below you. Yeah, just that much. All times. Even just yeah. one, you know, just one. Even. Like, I'm in my prime, all right? I'm getting there. <laughs> when I decide to actually play the game again, I'll get there. So, anyway, Jonathan, go for it. Shoot. What do what you do? Yeah, so, so, like, what y'all are bringing up, tilt isn't just anger. I thought one of you said that tilt is just when your emotions get in the way and, and stop you from performing. And I, I think that's, like even more apparent at a lower skill level uh, mm -hmm. so not met it as an insult but none of you are in the lcs so i think at that sure. level we see it, it so at that level it doesn't stop people from being able to play the game because they have a lot of stakes on the line they have money they have prestige they're trying to win um titles but even then you see like tilt at that level lowers their skill enough so that then they make mistakes that the other team who's not tilting at the moment is able to capitalize on. And so they don't spend a lot of cognitive space. And by that, I mean, like our, our attention is limited. Our brain only has so much that we can spend in a given moment. And so at, at the very, very elite level, almost none of their deliberate attention is put towards mechanics that stuff's all automatic map movements pretty automatic to the they probably have plays that they're running for certain objective setups and and like retreats um but as you go down the skill level 
like a lot more conscious effort is being put into things like CS, checking minimap, figuring out like timings of buffs, timings of objectives. And so when you're devoting any amount of energy to either being pissed off or being sad because your top is inting, uh, <laughs> like... I'm the sad boy. Of the group. Wow. <laughs> you said anxious. I think anxiety. No, yes, yes. I think anxiety was actually the the emotion you pegged, and so mm. your your brain already doesn't have a lot to spend, and now a portion of it is going towards anger, or anxiety, and so then your your mechanics are going to suffer, your performance is going to suffer, and then that sure. probably just spirals at that point. Okay. So what you're saying is that like, are you, I'm sure you are familiar with the like conscious competency model. Where, like, you go from uh, unconscious incompetence to unconscious, or to conscious competence to unconscious incomp. Wait, other way around. Other way around, yeah. 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 And in, ev in the end, you get to unconscious competence, where you don't right. have to think about something and then you're mm -hmm. just good at it by virtue of practice or whatever. Yeah, a lot of people right? call it muscle memory. Right. So. If you are at that point in league or you at a higher level, it takes you less brain power in order to execute those things. So the energy you spend tilted actually affects you less? Uh, it's, it's not that it affects you less. Um, or it's less detrimental or, you know. What, how do you... I think it spreads differently. Is like, like when you're playing at a higher level, not like your mechanics or like your back burner where you're not really paying attention to while you're cooking and then like your stuff like your communication and like how you're managing a team fight suffer more so yeah because like you'll see the videos from tsm or tl and like someone plays tilted you know like after the game they'll be like yeah so and so got really quiet during the game and we didn't really know how to play around him or what he needed or what we could do without him or if we needed him. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that's the difference between like high level and then solo queue. Yeah, I think the comms are often a really good indicator. If I'm working remotely or anytime I do like a boot camp or I'm out in LA or anything, I, I listen to comms because it's really good, especially if I'm working with a team that I haven't worked with before. It's like pretty good insight just to understand their communication. And in scrims, there's almost always a situation where something goes poorly and what happens after and like noticing that difference to what he's pointing out is like you can tell pretty quickly how certain people react when something goes wrong some people do tilt and get quiet other people get a lot more chatty some people get angry and i think it, so it's not that tilt affects pros m more or less it's just different i think their skill floor is a lot higher and so like the difference in their worst and best in terms of mechanical execution is pretty minor. Um, but you see it hit more like strategy, logic, judgment type of things. Okay. So we've talked a little bit about, you know, addressing tilt, like effective ways in which you can do that. Like if it, this is going to happen, then I'm going to react in this way, kind of pre-program yourself. Um, but how do you reset between games? I asked this question earlier, but then we yeah. went off on a different topic. But let's say you do get tilted, mm -hmm. you get upset, you're mad, and you need to play for some reason another game. Yeah. Right. So how do you how do you prevent that from carrying over to the next? Um, so part of this again, like these are all skills. So like, I can't just show you a flashcard and say this is a skill to try and then it's right. gonna, like magically work tomorrow. So. Um, one of the things I work a lot with, and you've probably heard pro teams talk about mindfulness or, or like meditation. Uh, some teams do like yoga as part of that, that skill. Mm -hmm. um, but breath control, what, when I started talking about fight or flight, so fight or flight, just we see a threat. And sometimes the threat is my top laner is inting. Like, well, that's a, it, it's not a threat that's actually going to kill us. Like, but our brain doesn't know the difference between a lion just showed up next to my computer 
and top laner is inting. Like, we see that both of those is a threat, and they both fire that same system automatically. I actually uh, feel like Astro's brain fires those things equally for, you know... I think the top laner fires I it could, faster than the lion. I could literally release a live cougar into his house, and it would... And he's good as long as top is in inting. Less. The cougar would probably leave him alone. Yeah. Because he's just sitting still. It would yeah. just prowl around the well, house. Well, I'm not like... sitting still. If I'm in a league game, I'm hitting my desk, you know. Yeah, but, you'd so, probably get mauled to death. So that starts happening, and then, like, fight or flight's great for a lot of things, especially if we need to, like, run from a lion. But it's really bad in a lot of other senses because it makes our vision narrow. It gets our heart rate all jacked up, which is not always useful, especially when we have, like, fine motor movements that we're trying to do with mouse and keyboard. Um, so breathing is one way to pull ourselves out of that. Like if you've ever, like think of the last time you laughed hysterically, like how do you tend to feel right after? Tired. Um, okay. A little lightheaded. Yeah. 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 Calm. Probably like Calm? not. Okay. Yeah. You've probably released a good amount of endorphins, I guess. Yeah. So, well, yeah. that's part of it. And then the tired sleepiness, um, so there's basically like just a, a nerve that's responsible for the opposite of fight or flight. So it's, its job is to make you calm down, relax, recover, digest, etc. And okay. your diaphragm, so for anyone watching, I'll yep. give you a crappy visual uh, for, if you're listening. <laughs> um, under your lungs, it's like the, the muscle that helps you breathe. So when you take really deep breaths, uh, that expands and it hits this nerve so that's why they say like deep breathing belly breathing is like a way to calm yourself down mm. La why i bring up laughing is like when you're laughing you're basically just like making that diaphragm spasm against that nerve over and over so it like pulls you out of fight or flight and like forces you to calm down mm. that's why laughter is contagious positive emotion etc um but if you find yourself tilting one way that you can start to like balance your body out is to maybe you died and so now you have 30 40 seconds or whatever like take that time to just take a few deep diaphragmatic breaths and like you can assess what's going on in the game while that's happening you can't do anything anyway other than like perhaps shop but you just died so you i can type to my cold. team and tell them they're bad you you could definitely do that and what i'm suggesting is this is a much breathe, better breathe become. when you die I, I yeah like it. i can breathe I think, that's, I think that's a good practice just breathe yeah. when you die okay that's it's like real, over actually, time that's really brilliant Okay. Like, way you can build this outside a game is there's all sorts of apps or just resources online now. So, um, Headspace is, is one app that they have a bunch of trial sessions you can do, and it's like guided meditation type stuff. Is that uh, like if, where the guy talks to you in a soothing yeah. voice and he's like, hey, mm -hmm. deeply inhale? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we actually released a podcast episode. Where no, no, no. You did, that. and it was really? horrible. Yeah, you'd think it was horrible. But we got a lot of positive feedback on that. We got a lot you of negative that, feedback on that. If that's the measure of success, then yeah. Well, no, we got a lot of positive. Hey, we uh, got a, a good amount of negative, but uh, I think some people weren't just ready to be. All, all publicity is good publicity. Or Amen, whatever, brother. Right. But no, I mean, it was it was literally like uh, Not you know, a take Lola. a deep breath. You know, picture yourself laying down on a beach, like. Let the sand mm -hmm. wash over you. It was deeply you know, into my shirt. The Feel biggest the sun, issue is with Blake's voice. It was amazing. It was rough. I, I tell you, you want to meditate to this. It feels it's pretty good. like deep and sultry. Damn right, like baby. It. And I'm not. Right. This isn't even the voice I was using. I went deeper. I James Earl Jones to that shit. Damn. It was amazing. In fact, listeners, go back and listen to that episode. Go find it and then enjoy. That's a gift from me to you. I would recommend you not to do it. Alternatively, there's a lot of professional resources out there. Yeah, uh, but they're not as good, right? Jonathan, I, right? I haven't, I haven't heard yours, so okay. I can't compare yet. So okay, I'll leave fair that. enough. That's good. We'll just Jonathan's stay with better that. better that way. Don't listen to it. Okay. <laughs> right. I'll, I'll just say I'm going to listen to it. That's fantastic. Good yeah. job. See, what's great is that the audio listeners couldn't see you wink. Except for so you just told them he winked. Yeah, he was winking to me because he knows it's awesome. I'm definitely <laughs> listening. <laughs> so anyway. I uh, actually, I have a question. Yeah, I sure. like to direct this conversation towards. Um, so one of the things that Blake and I are working on right now is learning new champs. Yeah. And he's learning a new role as well. 
Um, in particular, learning a new champ is kind of a big deal for me because uh, I only play two champions. I have over a million mastery points on both of them. Zillion and Teemo. That's yeah. quite the... I know, it really is. Yeah, it's not at one's, all. One's God and one's the Devil, okay? That's well, he doesn't play works. him at the same so, time, I, so he I could, started though. as Teemo and then went Zillion. Okay. This is true. Reformed. So, a little bit. Um, but, but anyway, I don't like change, right? And I, it's it's one of the things, honestly, I think that kind of triggers me is like not feeling like I'm in my own body, like not <laughs> feeling like I have control over my champion. So I like playing the same thing over and over again to kind of eliminate that and feel comfortable. Um, but yeah, so learning new things, um, I feel very out of place. Try, I'm trying to learn to keep the old skills that I've got with the champions that I have, like as far as you know, CSing or map awareness mm -hmm. or whatnot while learning the new mechanics of this new champion. Um, I don't know, I just guess I wanted you to kind of like, if you had some hints or like things that you could tell us as far as learning new champs and roles, what would be good? Yeah. Um, part of it is leaning into, or, or at least trying to recognize some of the behaviors or like the route you took to learn previous champions it's like oh. when you swap from teemo to zillion was there anything in particular that you you saw carry over i saw carry over i guess i mean um poking no <laughs> not at all actually i don't uh, interact I with my at all um no i think the one thing i mean just like Orb walking with auto oh, no. attacks, like it wouldn't have been instinctual with Zillion at all. His auto attack animation is terrible, but like because it was such a common part of what you do with Teemo, um, in particular, I, I played on hit Teemo. Mm -hmm. That was like, I don't know, a part of that. And like learning to uh, position, I think, in lane. Did you play Teemo bit. mid? I played Teemo top. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so some of it is that, like recognizing what you can do to translate because that like okay. shortcuts you're, you're not redoing work and so I, I mentioned earlier like when adcs had to start playing mid and whatnot a, a lot of them bristled at that because what they they had all the adc mechanics and swapping champions isn't very hard for people at that level but if you think about it they've built in like years of bot lane instincts so they okay. know the timings of of certain ganks they know when right. things start getting dangerous and then you're putting them in mid lane and it's like a whole other world and that's like really what i think made a lot of them nervous anxious etc is because like they just can't perform at that same level yeah yeah same yeah. so my story i played support for like seven years for three of those seven years i've been at a diamond level i have never played another role on a, I don't know, their content creation segment, whatever, I was challenged to pick up mid with a champion that I've never played in support. And whenever you've played support for like seven years, there's not a lot of champions that fit that groove, right? Yeah. And I had to pick something that, because I knew I was going to have to spam games because, you know, my thing for learning is like eliminate variables lock in one thing try to learn matchups as with one champion as quickly as you can maximize like minimize the things you have to learn and focus on the things to like improve on right mm -hmm. so example i have to learn a champion but i also have to learn a lane right so i want to maximize my knowledge by not changing my champion all the time so i'm I can really just focus on learning how to play the lane, mm -hmm. right? But everything is different. Like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm playing uh, Katarina, who's an assassin with a whole shitload of mobility. I'm playing in a new lane that's short as hell, and you know it's a duo. It's not a duo lane. It's a single lane. So all of my concepts and like, what is a burstable death? Like what uh, you know, all my instincts are wrong, mm -hmm. right? And it's been really challenging. And it's to a point, like, the hard thing for me is accepting failure hmm. as a cost of doing business here, right? Because, like, 
I'm going from like what is essentially the top two percent, like hard drop in skill to something else that I am not good at at all. Like I'm getting beaten soundly by people who are like two or two and a half divisions lower than me because I don't know what I'm doing. Hmm. Right. And so I have to accept that I perform shit at this until I get functionally better. Right. Mm -hmm. My answer to that has been to basically tell myself like, yeah, football players don't like two a days, but that's how you get better at football. Right. I don't have any other mechanisms other than that. Do you have any that would be handy and helpful? Because I yeah. could use them right now because I'm on the struggle bus, man. Yeah, I think uh, for both of you. So I think people generally just suck at practice. Uh, so a lot mm. of so, some of the things both of you are saying are pretty aligned with some good practice principles. But like the idea of jamming games or just grinding games just getting reps 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 is not really good for deliberate learning um so going in with a like a specific thing that you're trying to prove improve each time is pretty useful okay. uh and like trying to isolate that as small as possible so like maybe you're trying to work on you know, like just trades or you're working on like your movement pre six or how you handle the first objective just like really really tiny things that you're just like slowly trying to check off which to you it sounds like when you're switching to mid you're you're just trying to like special get something that good and then like move it off the list and like get on to the next thing yeah uh so going in with like let's say it's, it's thursday i know that i'm gonna be playing for two hours uh, in that two hours like here's the things that i want to try to achieve and then by the end of that like just see what went well what didn't and if you f feel like you're in a good place for it maybe that's off the list for next time and you're on something else or like maybe okay. you, you didn't get to where you wanted to and now that's like something else you want to you want to like get go back at it so how important in that is mixing up your practice like for example i would play a few games I would get to a point where either I felt useless or I felt like I was doing pretty well. And then I would go in and switch it up and do like one V ones versus ponderous just to do something different. Right. So we play laning phase out a few times and, you know, do that, develop whatever skills that I want to hard focus on and then move back into a game or something later. Mm. Is that good? Is that, I mean, if I, I feel like it was very helpful but like how much emphasis should one put on like changing it up i think that like comes down to boredom so if you it's not that that's gonna be detrimental to learning and in fact you're saying it worked and that's probably because it like kept you interested and then like it's hard to just grind league of legends the game is not like five people lose every game and yeah usually not in a fun way. And so <laughs> if you're trying to improve, like there's a certain level of that, that's just going to like beat you down. And then especially if you're tying it to rank, I mean, like part of improving is you need to recognize like rank is probably not going to be going in the direction you want it to go at the moment. And you got to like look more like long term. Uh, I'm eventually going to get good at mid or I'm going to get good at this new champion. And then once I'm good at it, I'm going to start like ranking back up. So like the breaks that you're talking about are probably useful, even if it's just, it's switching things up. I'm getting interested. It's stopping the like negative feelings of, of being kind of crap at whatever you were doing or like not where you want to be. And then it like maybe reinvigorates you to like, then go back at it. I think if you're not reaching a point where you feel like overtrained and you think you still have it in you to to keep working on whatever it was you're trying to work on than to keep going for it but breaks in general are are pretty good okay how much like what value should i place on research because like i've been watching a lot of videos of like higher ranked players on like 
the champion I chose was Katarina. So I've been watching like Cat Evolved and a couple other like high elo players to try to learn directly from them. It, how much of my practice should I substitute for research in order to climb? Um, I really like the idea of watching video, watching VODs. Uh, it's like vicarious learning, so learning from somebody else. There's a few like asterisks with it. So it's like if I wanted to get good at basketball, watching LeBron James is like obviously I'm seeing really good basketball, but right. my skill gap is pretty enormous. Like yeah. <laughs> night and day. Similarly, like if I'm trying to learn mid and I'm watching nothing but Bjergsen while Bjergsen is setting up for me exactly what it should look like to be amazing at mid at whatever champion he's playing. Like there's a, there's a large differential between me and him. So there's some things I can learn, but probably a lot of what he's doing is not something that I'm immediately going to be able to master. So I think it's useful to just kind of see what right looks like. And maybe there's like an aspect of Bjergsen's game that you can then try to emulate, but you shouldn't be watching like a, an LCS pro if you're not near that level and be thinking the whole time like, oh, I'm going to, once I'm done with this VOD, just roll into solo queue and I'm just going to replicate everything that they just did. Because that's just like way too much to take on at once. Okay. So take bite-sized chunks of what they did. Yeah. See if there's like an aspect of their game that in particular you're going to try to hone. And, and like that could even inform when I was saying like deliberate practice, like you can definitely get ideas from VODs. And, it, and it's not that the learning is bad, because I think you also see the way that they take trades, the item builds that they make, and that they're not just following a certain path every single yeah, time. Yeah, pre-programmed route or whatever. Right. Yeah. So on that, like, because that's really interesting, that gets me on to a rant that I wanted to go on some time ago. Um, <laughs> A lot of people. Uh, write you can into... walk away right now if you want. Come back <laughs> yeah, in two or three okay. minutes. So a lot of people write into the show and they're like, "Hey, this challenger player told me to not die and to never die, and that's how I get better is by never dying, because we did that's this like two episodes ago. Because that's what challenger players do. Because they've already honed their aggressive instincts to take the most out of available resources. Am I insane? To say that that is bad practice because it applies at the top of the ladder, but it may not apply to you due to that skill gap. Should you focus on practicing things that are relevant at the bottom of the skill gap, or should you aim your sights to the top of the mountain automatically well, in you your directed practice? Well, if you don't die, your, your opponent doesn't get any kills, right? Correct. <laughs> Lock it in. No, no, I'm just kidding. I, I see the not dying thing okay. as a manageable chunk that you could take off okay. in practice. I personally do. Yeah. Uh, that is how I started playing League of Legends was just with the motto not die. And I went from bronze to gold pretty quickly. And okay. I was playing Teemo top lane. So when you and were like, doing it. I know it's super low elo. I know it's yeah. a shitty champion. But like it very quickly yeah. put me out of that bottom rung. So I don't know. Were you taking no fights when you're doing it, or no? Nope. You... I was um, very. I was carefully choosing my fights. Yeah. Um, in particular, whenever like it was when it was around when jungle ganks were happening, like level two. When I like the jungler was level two, but I was like level one still. This okay. is when like early, early jungle ganks were happening top mm -hmm. lane. And like, yeah, as soon as Lee Sin shows up in my lane, back the fuck off. Just back the fuck off. Don't even mess with it. Don't even mm -hmm. try. You can't do anything. And that mentality of like, I'm going to deny all fights and trades until I am ready with a plan on what to do next. And then when I did that, I would get a good trade or a good kill, and then I would just be passive the rest of the time. Now, to a certain degree, like, there's other things you have to fight for, right? There's, like, minions, there's wave management, and that type of stuff. Okay. But for the moment, the biteable chunk I was worried about was picking the fight that would matter and not worry, even trying to worry about anything else. I don't know that I can hold my tongue any longer. I'm you really fun. trying not to. I, this Astros, is a so fundamental Astros, principle on which we dying? disagree. Hmm? Do you yeah. avoid dying? Do I what? Do you avoid dying? Like, okay, have so you taken this hold on. Time? I want to clarify I something. I play like a psycho, so. Yeah. So, like, 
I want to clarify something. I'm not talking about that avoiding dying is like a bad idea. That's not what I'm trying to get at. What I'm trying to get at is if you prioritize. I can do this in three, I can do this in three sentences. He's talking about the Caitlyns that's sitting under his tower while the the wave is in the middle of the wave. He's okay. talking about the person that is like refusing to engage in anything for the sole reason of not dying. It's not for the sole reason of playing smart. It's for the sole reason of I'm not going to give this person 300 gold. I don't care if it costs me 300 gold in CS. Yes. Like, that's it's, what's played. It's over to. passivity to the point that, like, you focus on something that's not your problem and you're creating more problems by over focusing on something that's not really relevant to you. And see, yeah. that to me is part of the learning process. They're not going to be perfect at everything. So they're biting off the chunk that they can right now and figuring but that out. But that's a bad chunk to bite off when you're is at the it? bottom of is the it? pyramid. When it you're at the bottom get... of the pyramid, yes. I, I was think, bronze I three think... and I got to gold one by not doing that. I mean, well, you, the way you explain it is completely different than what he's explaining. You explaining it as I'm not going to fight unless I think I'm it's like... because he's explaining it from his viewpoint as a passive observer rather than the person who's making the decision. No, I, I, mean, like... I think he's making the the observation for being an aggressive player and you're making right the he's ready to being... make those decisions the caitlin's not the caitlin doesn't feel comfortable i feel like you're actually both on the same side okay uh but interesting. so what interesting that is, take go um, on so maybe this is a mini rant from me he's just uh, saying that you're ooh. both wrong in the show no, that's mm. probably true as well no so like challenge uh, you're saying challenge your players but in general like we're we're mostly at a point now where professional teams recognize that coaches um need to be good at coaching and that may or may not include previous play experience but that well, wasn't that, uh, monte cristo like gold three yeah yeah i i think uh like the understanding of a game is completely different than mechanics because mm -hmm. you can be mechanical and not understand the game and reach high elo but you could be bad mechanically and understand the game and no. you won't climb you can understand the game and not have any idea of how to coach players. That's yeah. the other well, yeah. problem. Yeah, coaching other. is... Right, I and so that's what we yourself. see with, like, just challenger streamers or whatever. When they put out these tips, they actually mean them likely in the way that we're talking about it here. So when they say don't die, what people are hearing is sit under the tower and, like, legit just r remove yourself from conflict. What they mean, they just they can't... They can't illustrate what it is they do because they just they just do it. They're not coaches. They're just very good players. And so when they say don't die, in their head that means be smart about the fights you take. Think about item spikes. Think think about power spikes. Think about what level it is when they went like if a gank would be coming, etc. They're like in their head shortcutting all of those million checkpoints on a decision tree to oh yeah just just don't die and like and if you don't die you're fine. Um, but. But they don't say any of that logic between point A and point B. And so someone who's watching who doesn't have their level of understanding of the game here is don't die. And they take it quite literally like, oh, okay, I'm not going to die. But even when you were talking about like on like playing top lane as Teemo, like you weren't just avoiding conflict. You were being smart and recognizing that Lee Sin was very likely going to take a level two gank if you knew that he started bot side. Right. And yeah. like then you were just purposely not engaging then but it wasn't like you just sacrificed an entire minion wave you were just being smart about it and so i i agree that like the bite-sized chunk thing is is important and so maybe an aspect of that the very lowest level is my way of not dying is i look at the mini map after every cs like i'm sure we've heard this as a, yes. a recommendation before so like that's an easy way to start to program like i'm being smart about csing but i'm not just like tunnel visioning on it and then like another step could be I start to track which side the jungler started on and think about like in the current patch what level that might mean that they're going to show up in my lane. And so like it's another way of me not dying, but I'm also like being proactive with it and like building another skill. So mm -hmm. the advice of not dying isn't inherently bad. It's just like incomplete. Yeah, it's flawed yeah. because like high level players just don't know how to connect the dots for people. <coughs> I think seems I reasonable think, to me. I am yeah. satisfied with that answer. I think you <laughs> finally bridged the gap. But okay, so there is something I do want to talk about that that is tangent to that, right? Um, 
the gap between what I would consider to be high and low ELO, which would basically be the entire ELO of platinum, right? I mean, some would put it in mid-diamond. I'm going to say that diamond and up is, is good because you can say you're in the top 2%. I think if you're in the top 2% of the player base, you're good at the game. Hell, I think if you're in the top 8% of the player base, which is plat, you're good at the game. A lot of people get stuck in plat, and they can't crest to diamond, right? Like, they have a lot of issues with that. And I think a lot of those issues is, like, preconceived notions as to what success or failure will, will result from whatever the plays that you've done based on past experience so bad habits basically. and bad habits like our uninformed habits right so like sure. i did this 300 times in silver and it never worked so now it won't work in plat but the reality is it probably would right with, with proper execution you've just conditioned yourself to have a response right that is negative right like when proposed with this situation i run or when proposed with this situation, I go all in, and you're wrong, right? Mm -hmm. Tra trained your instincts incorrectly. You have bad habits. How right. do we break those? How do we recognize those? Right, because well, I think it's not that, that you were trained on a bad habit. It's you were trained on a uh, on a fine habit at the time, but circumstances changed. Okay, yeah, sure. you've outgrown your habits. Right. It's like when we were hunter gatherers. You're calling it something different, but yes. I yeah. Agree. Same thing. So how mm -hmm. do you how do you like deprogram? Do you have any ideas how to? I guess the ways in which you can instinctually remove some of that conditioning. Like I refer to that as the plat glass ceiling. Yeah. Right. To unfortunately, it like likely involves getting worse before you get better again. Because mm -hmm. you you do have to untrain it. Um, and so I, I think it fits into <coughs> excuse me like everything we've been talking about so far. Like you need to know what that habit is to change it. Like mm -hmm. it's not just going to change itself when, I, when you're like, oh, well, I want to hit diamond now. So I'm going to do the bad things good. Then we're going to be we're going to be diamond. I told myself that earlier <laughs> in the season. I told myself I wasn't going to tilt so I could hit diamond. And then I just found myself tilting still. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of times people like make goals or plans and there's no intentionality with it. I think we see this like every December 31st. <laughs> it's like you know 2019 is going to be my year and we just like say that and it's like champagne filled and whatever uh but like if 2019 is going to be the year that i get my six pack or whatever it is like it's just like we, we say this sentence and then there's like there's no path to actually get it much like oh i'm yeah. going to be diamond this season cool what are you gonna do differently in season nine that you? I'm not gonna do? tilt. Okay, and what are you gonna do to not tilt? I'm not gonna play the game. <laughs> it's a, not playing the game is a great way to not lose rank, but it's definitely not a good way to rank up. Um, so I think with like all these habits, part of it requires like some self awareness to you have to like take inventory of like what is jacked up, like what are the things that I'm not doing. Or like the things that I'm doing wrong that I'm that are causing me to either lose lane, lose game, whatever it is, and then like just working on them one at a time and recognize that you're gonna lose rank doing it. Will, will it help <laughs> if you get your six pack first? Maybe. Then I would think like it was self flex on benefits, your lane. Right? I've got yeah. several already. It's great. <laughs> Smash all the e girls. So yeah. So it's like a sports psychologist. So you. You kind of take the aspect of okay. like the player. Hold up, he's not a sports psychologist. Yeah, just quick. So, the ist on the end means I have a clinical license. I don't have that. I have a lot of training, a lot of experience. Continue. I, As someone who does very, my, my very who similar deals with brains. Thing. Yeah, yeah, very similar thing, but not quite. Doesn't yeah, just not ist. clinical. Yeah. Um. So you kind of work in the same environment as coaches in the team, and you guys fill like a similar similar role, but in different aspects. They teach game, you teach brain, in that yeah. kind of way. Yeah. Um, for, you teach brain. I well, can't believe that I it? understood what you were saying when you just said that. He was sentence. just talking about yeah, hunter gatherers. Ahead. It fits. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, 
and that's at like a pro environment. How important is it for you in a way of getting coaching for someone in like solo queue? Like, what's your thoughts on that? Like someone like me coaching somebody in silver? Or like, or like someone in silver going and getting coached? Like, do you think it's a worthwhile investment? How did you just set off my Alexa through my headset? That's impressive, actually. I'm Thanks not even going to edit. I'm not even nice going to edit this out. It is nice. It's, it's beautiful outside. Anyway, um, go on. I think coaching, if you can find good coaching, is worth it across skill levels. Um, I, I think we see it in like everything else. Like if you're working on your fitness or you're trying to like eat better. <clears throat> getting someone who knows what they're talking about to like write that out for you is going to be way better than anything you figure out. It's like you might know what that you want to get better, but you don't know the like the best path to do that. And like a good coach would or should be able to like write that out for you. Um, I think it comes down to resources. So like if money is not a thing or like the money for it doesn't impact you, yeah, I think coaching is great as long as you can find someone who knows what they're doing. So do you think it's kind of like a scale thing where like the mental aspect of the game becomes more important as you climb <clears throat> or as you get into like a higher stage where it's more effective? So I think it's very, very impactful at all levels. I think why we notice it more at a top level is like one, they have the resources, but two they if you think of like the dials someone can move in terms of upping their performance at the top level their mechanics are pretty much near max their strategic knowledge is pretty maxed yeah. and so we're like just trying to figure out like what are the gaps that we can change and so at that level it's things like how they approach the mental game what their diet is how they sleep and and like they've already figured out the other stuff oh by the way i just want to be clear that uh, I wasn't being a dick to Jonathan by pointing oh, out no. that he wasn't a doctor. I that, pointed it out myself all the yeah, time. And he you could be a doctor before, and not be a psychologist. Yeah, so. yeah. He, uh, he pointed it out before Jay's like, no, 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 not a sports psychologist. Don't say that. And I was like, okay, we'll do. And then Most of them that say that I didn't get that sports psychologists memo. aren't. It's fine. Uh, yeah. and, and a lot of people won't correct because ethics or whatever. They, some people don't have them. Um, but so, so yeah, I have a master's in sport and performance psychology and I, not, a doctorate, yeah, so. not, uh, well, even if I had a doctorate in sport and performance psychology, if like, I don't have a clinical license, I can't uh, call myself a psychologist. Right, right. All that means is I don't deal directly with clinical issues like long-term depression, anxiety, eating disorders, etc. I recognize the limits and I'll refer people to experts who can get them help. Um, and I don't dispense pharmaceuticals. Um, but so my expertise is totally centered on the applied aspect of getting people to use their brains better, applied performance psychology. Okay, cool. So we're running short on time. And so I'm going to kind of open up the floor to you. If there is something that is like, I know that you uh, take out all the things you've already said, which are like small and manageable Bleh. small and manageable chunks mm -hmm. uh focus on improvement try to you know deal with your tilt preemptively by steering your response deep breathing things like that aside from those things what is your biggest piece of advice to someone who's trying to climb the ladder and increase their performance Right. And if you've if you've already covered it and it's one of those things I just listed, say, OK, all of those things first and then this. Right. If you need. Yeah. To. So it's going to vary little person to person. But like there's there's certain habits we can get into that have a really high impact just overall on performance. And so let's imagine everything we've talked about, you're doing it, you're like going into practice honed you know exactly what you're trying to work on that day and you have a plan for it there's just like little habits we can get into that start to train our brain to be better at readjusting and so optimism is a learned trait 
opt when I say optimism, I don't mean like everything's going to be great. Everything's wonderful. There's no bad in the world. But I mean, like you notice what in a situation you can control, you are realistic and you focus only on the things you can control. So like in a game of League of Legends, you understand that you control your character and the actions you make, and you can't change what the other nine people are doing. Um, we can actually train that in our brain. So our brain notices possibility more, and one really easy way to do it, and it's gonna probably sound crazy to people, is um, it's called gratitude journaling. And really all you're doing is every single day you are taking a moment to think about a few things that went well that day, and they can be really small. Like, I had a great cup of coffee this morning, and I didn't have to wait for it. Really small. Or it could be like, I won the lottery. Like, that's you know really big, and you probably shouldn't play League of Legends. You should go enjoy your money. Um, but if each day you, like, take a little bit of time, and, and I say journaling because it's it gets more of a habit if we, like, write this stuff down it lets us reflect on it. If I write down like a couple of good things that happened th to that day and I like just take a minute to reflect like why I thought of them, like why was that thing good? Why was it good enough for me to even think of it right now? What I'm doing is training my brain to notice stuff that is positive. And what that does for me in a performance context is my brain like looks for possibility. So instead of getting tunneled in on stuff that's going wrong, my brain like is building the muscle of like noticing the things I can control. You're focusing on positives, not on negatives. Positives, yeah, but sometimes like it's more just like effective thinking because sometimes we can say negative things to ourselves and it works. And so, yeah, but but like hunting positive stuff, I I then am able to just like notice what I can control and ultimately high performers, athletes, etc are really good at putting a lot of their energy on the things they can control and accepting the things that they can't. And in a game of League of Legends, if you're focusing a lot of your energy on the stuff you can control, you're probably going to play closer to your skill potential than not. Cool. Interesting. Okay. Do I think that's a great one more. We, yeah. I, I got one thing I wanted to ask. Let me uh, let me open it up to the chat too after you're done. If there's any chat questions. So you talked about how you've done stuff for like League, CS, Overwatch. Was there any like? Is there any correlation between like game type? and like how much of like a mental boom on average the players have like do you find like MOBAs tend to be more frustrating and mm. something that people struggle to deal with emotionally game by game or maybe FPSs or is there no correlation at all? Um, I don't know that there's meaningful difference between them. I think solo queue in general is just a frustrating experience for people uh, especially when they're good so I, like even so, I mean, the best players you can think of tilt in, in solo queue because it's just a frustrating experience because other people are involved. So, I, yeah, I don't know that it's it's much different. It's just the margins are different in other games. So, like, in, in Counter-Strike, it's, like, really, really fine motor movement accuracy, twitch r r responses, and, like, they're just short bursts of things, and then you're just, like, sitting there dead for an entire round. So I think the what is different is, like, the time gaps that you have either between games or between rounds and and that sometimes changes how people have to like reset their brain because they have like different gaps to use because i play both like i play cs and i play league and i play destiny so it's like two shooters and a moba and mm -hmm. league's like the only moba i've ever played i've been a, a shooter guy ever um but it's like i find myself tilting at different reasons but it's 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 in like spurts mm -hmm. but they're both kind of triggered differently like Dying in a shooter for me, I tilt. But like, if I see something dumb in a MOBA that someone else does, I tilt. Mm -hmm. Where unless I play my death really bad, like I don't have a problem dying. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Also, just because in MOBAs you tend to have a greater awareness of everything that's going on in the map, whereas like in a in an FPS you're pretty inundated with stimulus, like just on your own screen, and a lot mm -hmm. of it matters in that moment, and you don't have the like other than a mini map or just the communication you're getting with your teammate, like, you can't go global as easily. Mm -hmm. sure. That's okay. all I had. Jill, you got anything you want to ask? No, I think this has been really cool. Uh, it's really helpful. Thanks a lot for coming on, Jonathan. Thanks for having me. Hey, Jonathan, if we get a ton of feedback that uh, users just really want to pick your brain on something else, would you mind to come back here in, I don't know, a few months? Yeah, sure. 
Excellent. Okay, well, I'll let you know, and uh, thank you for showing up. I really appreciate it. Thanks for sharing your time. And uh, I guess we'll wrap it out with that. Oh, the tournament! You almost let me forget to announce the tournament, Astros. So why don't you do that, because I don't remember the details. All right, so Gensos is hosting uh, a tournament. It's on August 7th, which is a Wednesday. Um, it's a TFT tournament, so the more of you that sign up, the better. Uh, it's going to work in sets of eight, so if we only have eight players, we can only run eight, 16, 24, 32, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you're guaranteed three games, and then top eight move to a final round. Uh, and as the prize, you get a free DUI representation from Blake. No, no you uh, don't. That's not true. <laughs> That's objectively not true. So, but it no, doesn't we have will. to just be DUI is what he's saying. If you got like uh, you got tax manslaughter. Or... Yes. Uh, yeah, manslaughter. Let's just do that. <laughs> um, no, uh, keep in mind as a actual disclaimer, I only work in Missouri and Kansas. Those are the only two states I have bar licenses in. So no. Secondly, don't get in trouble. It's just a bad idea, right? And it's third, expensive. there are a ton of ethical dilemmas that deal with attorneys giving out coupons for, like, <laughs> free representation to be misrepresented as a get-out-of-jail-free card, Ethics. which What's does that? not exist. So, there you go. You must not be a very good lawyer if you don't have, if you can't get me out of jail for free. And That's four, I didn't want to invite that statement ever to be said, so there's that. Uh, so, no, <laughs> I did not say that. Do not do it, but I will give out some skins from the podcast to you. So, mystery Sweet. skins to the winner. Awesome. Do you or want to do top, winner, or do you well, want to do top like three? Top, top four, I guess? I'd do top three. Top three. Okay. Top four yeah. doesn't gain you LP in rank. We're stingy around here. I thought it did. Uh, it depends on your elo is. and the elo of your lobby. So you, usually you're either plus or minus one to four. Okay. Or so, you just go zero. So there you go. We'll do top three. Right? Cool. All unless right. I get unless I get top four, then we'll do top four. No, we won't. Okay. Ethics. What is that? Yeah. Who needs them? All right. Good night, everybody. And we're good. The uh, the podcast has stopped recording. We have to wait for the uploads, though. That's going to be a pain in the ass. And well, they yeah, just it was created... like an hour last time. Well, I think it was fucked up last time. I sure hope so. Because like it's a successfully generated rational writer, or whatever. Oh, Mine's Jonathan's is done to too. Oh, fuck! It, Jonathan it ruined it. Where are you seeing it? It just popped up briefly. But yeah, no, yeah we, we're still uploading, Blake. We yeah, talked more not, than them, I guess. Mine's not doing shit. Well, it still would be the same file size. It would just be a file full of empty space. No, I, I was just joking. Oh, mine's done. Yep, Astros went through. All right, Astros, you're free to go. Well, that was fun. Yeah, that was a pretty good episode, all in all. I was really hoping John would be my therapist and just fix just, my problems. I'm very I, expensive. I don't think... Expensive? <laughs> like, what are we talking, like $3 an hour? I don't think John has a medicine cabinet in his pocket. Well, he I can't mean, give... Not one big enough for worry, you. He doesn't have to worry about that. My dad's a pharmacist, all right? I'm golden. Yeah. All right, ethics. Is there any way for me to see if I'm uploading? Uh, it uh, says on your camera, there'll be a little person. cloud with, like, an arrow. It's not there anymore. They took that off. Well, was... I still see yours. You do? I don't see it. I don't see anybody's. I see Blake's. Really? Uploading progressively. Yeah. Yeah, my, I mine don't uploading? see that. Well, mine it's... was there until you said mine was until you said that mine went through and mine disappeared. No, it's there. Hmm. Yeah, Once now it's my cloud's gone. Yeah, because you're not uploading progressively anymore. It's uploaded. Like you it, are I... literally done. I can download your wave file. Lit, cool. Don't forget. Uh, no, I cannot. Hmm. The only thing I hate about this thing, because they just announced, like, we're doing 2.0 version. And I'm like, okay, great. But if you look in the top left, is yours just like a file clip with Squadcast logo next to it written in blue? Yeah, it looks real good. <laughs> yeah. They just did episode 2.0 or whatever for this software. And the problem is they still haven't put like a upload bar 
Which would be super fucking handy, because then I would know if it's actually functioning. Um, if you try, if you do like an F5 to refresh the screen, that helped last time. It's not going to fuck it up? I don't think so. It didn't last time. I mean, if it does, we have Twitch audio. Yeah, I got backup audio, and it's still going. Right. I should actually stop that audio, because we're still streaming. That's got to be the most boring stream ever at this point.